Greetings, this is Jerry Revere from the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. The video you are about to view focuses on the install of a midsize enterprise 6.2.2 release on a pre-staged server. The process details the pre-staging and the enhanced network reconfiguration functions. The main focus of the video that you are viewing today will be showing the Midsize Enterprise 6.2.2 Streamlined Installation. Before we go through the actual install, I will ground what the Streamlined Install was developed for and the benefits it presents in this release. Streamlined Installation was provided for a much quicker install as the 6.2.2 template is installed by Avnet with a simple set of common default values. This is accomplished by providing Avnet with an EPW file that contains all the required default values. The creation of the electronic provisioning worksheet as a topic will not be covered here, but we'll look at the values I pre-configured in an EPW to create the system on a real customer network install demonstration. The benefits of the streamlined install are several hours in reduced install time, and the network parameter changes can be accomplished quickly across the template, either post-install or doing the actual install itself. The table shown here shows the pre-stage values. Since it is likely that the server will be plugged into the existing customer network with the IP addressing shown in place, it is important to validate that those addresses don't exist on the customer network before turning on the server. Note the host names that are defaulted and the IP addresses associated with each entity in the left column. Moving on to the actual demo, I have logged into a pre-staged server for the first time. The first step is to accept the end user license agreement. Following that, the next step is to setting the time zone and NTP if that is to be used. For the demo, we will not be using the Network Time Protocol, NTP. Please consult the installation guide and the intelligent workbook configured for your customer for NTP specifics. Upon pressing the Save button, a pop-up is presented to inform that the server will be rebooted to make the changes active. I have confirmed the pop-up and after about 7 to 10 minutes, the server will be back up to be able to be re-logged into. The server has completed the reboot. After logging back into the system, you are presented with a virtual machine management page. Looking down the IP address column, you can see the range of the defaulted IP addresses that were pre-configured as part of the staging process. The next thing I am showing you is not part of the install procedure, but I wanted to show you how the staged default host names and IP addresses are represented in the network configuration section. As you can see, the IP addresses and the host names are shown in the chart are implemented within the stage system. Going back to the virtual machine management screen, we will continue on the documented install process. Selecting Templates provides two buttons to configure or delete the installed template. I have selected the Configure button. The Select Template screen is presented. From here you can enter an EPW file if you have one pre-configured. The EPW is created from a tool called the SP pre-installation wizard, which can be downloaded from support.avaya.com. I have selected an EPW file I pre-configured for this demonstration and press the Upload EPW File button to make it available to the system. After the file has loaded, the template details screen is presented. You can confirm what is being installed and then press the Configure button. The template process screen is presented and the pre-installed web application will be presented to you after about 45 seconds.
The pre-installed web screens total about 15 altogether. This will allow the installer to validate what was pre-configured in the EPW. The first screen is where the new IP addressing and host names are displayed. Press the Next Step link to advance to the virtual FQDN screen which is used for SMGR Geo Redundancy. Geo Redundancy is not supported in ME, but the screen must be filled out. Pressing the Next Step advances to the login screen. The upper portion of the login screen is brand new. It does have some service impacting implications. Avaya security standards require certain password length and alphanumeric configurations. The SP login dialog supports those requirements. The entries here will change the known system platform defaults and after the system reconfiguration completes those passwords will be in place. These passwords belong to the customer so they should be part of the discussion to define them. Do not forget them as access to the system will be blocked. The balance of the screens duplicate what is currently available in early releases of Midsize Enterprise. I will scroll through them fairly quickly for that reason. Stopping for a moment at the Configure System Manager screen, use the Download XML Files button to save the configuration for the upcoming portion of Session Manager install. The final screen before the summary screen is for SMGR Backup. This screen is new for the midsize enterprise, but has been part of System Manager for a while in its current releases. This screen allows the SMGR data to be protected if a restore is needed. I am not configuring the backup information in this screen. The summary screen shows the values not set, and the ones listed are optional. And selecting the Next Step button presents a confirmation screen where you see the optional values again are not set in the proportion. Press the Accept and then the Install button to complete and close the wizard. The install will now proceed. After a short time, a screen will be presented that denotes the network configuration changes are in progress. When the web console is presented again, the login and the new password for admin will be required. Note in the pop-up, the URL has the new customer IP address and will be used to bring up the new web console. Please note that the IP address has now changed to the newly configured customer LAN IP. The system is continuing to perform the network parameter changes and the balance of the install. Using fast motion video, I have sped up the process to show the complete install taking place. What you are seeing really occurred in approximately 45 minutes. The message highlighted shows a template upgrade has completed successfully. Lastly, going back to the Virtual Machine Management page, you can see the customer network IP addressing is in place and the Midsize Enterprise platform 
is ready to be completely provisioned. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.